Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and in the next 15 minutes, we are going to create a simple Slack app in Node that will post a message into a channel. So to get started, I'm in api.slack.com in slash apps, and I can click create a new app. So what this app is going to do, it's going to read some stock information, get the price of that stock, and then post that information into a Slack channel. So we'll call this uh, the stock alert. So I'm going to put this into a, into a Slack app that I have called Jurassic Park for, for me and my, my family, and we'll create this app. So what do we want to do in this app? We have to add functionality to it. What we are going to be covering today is called an incoming webhook. So we'll just click into that and we'll have to activate it. And what this allows us to do is basically it gives us a URL where if we post data to that URL, it will go and show up inside of our um, Slack application. So what we'll do is we'll say add new webhook to workspace. You have to choose which channel you, you're going to post in. So I'm going to be posting into stock alerts and I'll just click allow. And what that does is it refreshes the page with an example of sort of what data to post to for it to work. So let's leave this for now. We'll come back to it. We're going to focus on our express app for a second. I've got a very simple express app that I uh, created with what's it called express generator. So I just ran I won't run it, but I ran npx express generator generator and I said uh, dash dash no view and I give it a name. What was this called? Stock alert. So I basically ran this and that set up the app that we're looking at right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing up and running. So I'll do npx nodemon yarn start. Known mon so that when I make changes to this Express app, it um, automatically reloads so that I get the latest um, code. So we'll go to Locos 3000, make sure it's working. Looks good. Back to the Express app. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new route. We'll call this the, the alert router. So routes alert. Um, set up the router. Now we'll set up a path that basically listens for requests to that. So we'll call this the alert to the alert router. And we have to go into routes and create that file that I referenced up here. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy over the one that was set up for us from the home page. And I'll just explain quickly what it does. It's not meant to, to talk about so much Express, but we're using Express, so let's let's cover it. We're importing Express, and we're grabbing the router from Express, and we're setting up a route to listen to request, get request to slash. Then when, when our router basically catches or detects that route, we inside of this function here have a chance to respond back with whatever data we want. So let's say when we get a request to um, slash alert, so the root of that would be the slash. So what we can do is we can respond with some JSON. So let's just make sure that it's working. Let's spit out the date. So we'll do new date and we'll do two ISO string. And what we should see if we uh, visit this page, it's not the home page, that's a lie. Clean up our comment. So if we go to slash alert, we get this JSON that I set up with the date. Okay, next thing we are going to do is we are going to make a request to this uh, Alpha Vantage API to grab some stock information and we'll grab it for Shopify since, since it's been pumping quite a bit lately. So I'm gonna grab this URL, come down here, and I'm going to make a request to it. Because it's uh, dealing with promises, we will make this an async function. Let's import um, Axios, require Axios, just like that. So I had previously added uh, just two dependencies, Axios, which we just used, and .env, so I can store my, uh, my key in this .env file without uh, exposing it to the world. So come back here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a request and get a result. 
So we're going to wait for that Axios.get request, and we'll paste that URL in here. So we are doing it for the symbol shop, but why don't we just put that into a variable? Shop like that. So we can embed this symbol and we will update our API key. So this was process.env.api key is what I named it. Cool, so if we make this request, we can look at the, uh, the result that it gives us back. So console.log result.data. So if I were to uh, refresh this page now, it still looks the same, but I come down here and I get all of this nice JSON, tons of it. But what we want to do is basically grab, uh, when was the last uh, refresh date? So that we can go grab that date's close value. So we sort of have to do it in two steps. Figure out what the last date was and then grab the close value. So that's in metadata. So let's go to the code and we'll say const last refreshed is result.data. Um, metadata. Okay, and then after metadata, it is, what a weird key name, um, three dot last refreshed. Oh boy. Some. Okay. So that should give us the last refreshed. Let's just Hope it worked, and that will give us the last close if we access result.data at time series daily. And then we access the date that we just grabbed above. And then we can access number four close. Cool. Why don't we just console log that out, make sure that we actually grabbed the last close date. So we'll refresh, go in here, and we can see that it last closed at $708 uh, USD. I think it's pulling it from the New York Stock Exchange. So not the Canadian listing. That step one has nothing to do with Slack at all, but I wanted to get some dynamic data to make it a little bit more interesting. So now that we have the last close, why don't we make that post request to the Slack URL that we generated with our Slack app? So we'll go back here, we'll copy the webhook URL, and we'll come in here and we'll just say, um, the Slack result is awaiting a post to that URL, and we want to post some data to it. So they show you here, you can just post some text um, as sort of like a bare minimum. Why don't we do that just to make sure it's working? So we'll say text, hello world, save that. I'm not really doing anything with the Slack results, so let's just uh, get rid of that. And for the heck of it, why don't we put the last close inside our JSON response? So if I refresh the page again, it's gonna grab the stock data from this API and then make a post over to um, this URL with hello world as the, the JSON body of that. So refresh and boom, it notified me about uh, this hello world from my stock alert app. So I could go in here, I could update its uh, logo and all of that stuff, but I'm just gonna leave that alone for now and try to make this message a little bit more interesting. So whenever you're posting messages to a Slack channel, Slack has this idea of blocks, and they have this pretty cool, um, basically JSON format of how you can mix and match these blocks together. It's, it's sort of like there's a variation of markdown. Um, you can add images to it, like this little image here. You can add buttons, they call them actions to the bottom that will report information back to the app that, that posted that. That's, I would say, for another video. But for now, why don't we just add a block with a link uh, that will take us over to the Google Finance page for this uh, Shopify stock. So what I'm going to be doing is passing a block just with one section 
this section will have some markdown. It's sort of weird markdown. They do URLs really strange, not like the typical markdown way. But uh, let's go with it. We got to use their format. So instead of text, let's switch up to blocks. It's an array of blocks. Um, and the first one is a type of section. And then we've got some text in there. And the text has a type, which is this like markdown type. Text, type markdown, and then our actual text. Cool. So here we can say whatever we want, and we can use um, markdown to, to bold text and whatnot. So um, alert, alert, let's say the symbol bolded is now a dollar sign and then embed value, and we'll grab the last close. And then let's uh, put a link. So the way they do links, it's like a single tag like this with the first part of the tag, the URL, and then a pipe, and then whatever text you wanna show up. So we'll just say like uh, view on Google Finance like that. Safe. So I think that works. Um, I don't know. Let's try it out. So we'll come back here, refresh the page. For some reason, it says this content can't be displayed. That's interesting. But we come in here and we see alert, alert, shop bolded is now $708 with uh, many decimal places. And then we've got a link to take us over to view this on... Um, in Google Finance. So when would I use this? Um, in the past, we've used this as like post deploy hooks when we're, when we're deploying code. And like when the deploy is finished, it posts this message to Slack to basically notify the devs on the team that the deploy just went live and it's finished. You can now view it. But you could really use this for anything, like anywhere in your application where maybe a user does something really special and and it warrants alerting a certain channel about it. Um, maybe you could use it for like when a specific error comes up or when you get a new email contact that filled in information on a form. It's really up to you and what you're building this for. You could do it to alert you when a stock hits a certain price. So you'd, you'd, have, a, you'd have maybe some code deployed where a, a cron job is, is watching um, a stock value and if it hits a certain threshold it boom sends you a message to slack it's up to you but what i wanted to cover today is basically how you can set up a simple slack app with a webhook url to post information from node in our case an express app and have that land over in your slack channel that you set up and then you can use blocks to sort of customize how that message looks like embed dynamic data, embed URLs, etc., And uh, that's what I wanted to cover. I would say next up, I want to dive into a little bit more um, how to make these dynamic, sort of how to receive feedback back from Slack, receive that in Node, and then do something about that. So in this case, you've got like a, say like a vacation time off request that you want to approve or deny. Um, maybe I'll try and do a demo like that next. Let me know what sort of Slack app integrations you'd like to see. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll post uh, the source code for this below. Um, take care. Bye.